for a time, Brother Bill, until I got bigger than he was. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Hallelujah. But I appreciate everybody <clears throat> that God sent my way to fill that void. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And most of all, my Heavenly Father that yes. was always there to put His arms around me. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. I went fishing with my dad several times. Every time I went, he was there. Amen. Yeah. He went with me everywhere I went. <clears throat> Hallelujah, my Heavenly Father and me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I appreciate so very much all that He's done yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. Open up your Bible this morning. Turn it to a book you probably haven't been to in some time. James, the first chapter. The book of James, the first chapter, beginning in the 14th verse. And we're picking up today where we left off last Sunday. When this sermon started out, this series started out as a sermon about six weeks ago. And at the time, Brother Bill, I thought, man, Lord, that's a, that's a rough one. I, I guess I'll, I'll preach this and we'll move on. Well, six weeks later or so, we're still here. <clears throat> same, same place. Amen? Amen. James 1 and 14 says this, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust yeah. and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Mm -hmm. And sin, and you probably hear this in your sleep, we've been telling, saying it so much lately, and sin, when it is finished, Bring. bringeth forth death. Amen? Amen? Then he would say these words that let us know that he wasn't just talking to the drunkard, he wasn't just talking to the man that had never known Jesus. He says, do not err, my beloved brethren. The biggest part of the New Testament was written to the church. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, right. The biggest part of it was written to you after you were born again. Of course, there's the Gospel in there. Of course, there's writings in there specifically for sinners. But the biggest part of it, the largest percentage of it was written to the church. Yeah. Amen? Right. So many times we accredit words like repentance and confession and, 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 and you know the altar to sinners or people that we call sinners that have never been born again. Maybe I should put it like that. Yeah. People who have never been born again. Amen? Because we're all sinners saved really? by grace. Really? But people who have never been born again, we always like to use those terms with those kind of people yeah. whenever in reality if you search the Scriptures and study them for yourself, you'll find these terms and these words used for the church more than it is for the unbeliever. Amen? Amen. In the book of Revelation alone, the only time you hear the word repent is to the church. Seven times to the church. Repent or I'll come quickly and I'll remove your candlestick out of its place. Repent. Amen? Yeah. What did John teach us? If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John 1 and 9. All right. That's John saying if we... Amen? This is John the Beloved. Come on. John the Revelator as the songwriter called him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is John that rested his hand on the bosom of Jesus. This is John that was the only disciple that the Bible records as being at the foot of the cross whenever Jesus gave up the ghost. Amen? Oh, yeah. This is the only disciple that the Bible it tells us has the revelation of Jesus Christ the way that He got it on the Isle of Patmos in the book of Revelation. Come on, say it. This John yeah. that healed the sick yeah. laid hands on the sick and saw him recover. This John that staggered out of the upper room on the day of Pentecost full of the Holy Ghost Come on. so much so that they thought he was drunk. Yeah. This John Come on. said if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Yeah. Letting us know that no matter how big you are, mm -hmm. no matter how small you are, no matter how terrible you think you are, no matter how good you think you are, you still need repentance mm -hmm. in your life. You still need the blood. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Right. You didn't just ask for forgiveness one time and that was just a done deal and you'd never mess up again. No, you messed up today. Mm -hmm. right. Amen? Mm -hmm. I like that little thing I read. I might even put it in the newsletter once. It was someone talking. They said, Lord, 
So far today, I haven't messed up. I haven't sinned. I haven't done anything wrong. But in a few minutes, I'm going to get out of bed. Amen. My feet are going to hit the floor and then I'm going to need your forgiveness. Because I'm going to think something I shouldn't. Hey, you ever heard somebody say they're a pretty good old boy when they sleep? Amen. I don't even know if that can be said about us because some of our dreams ain't real good. Amen. Sometimes we have to repent for what we dream. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you get up feeling lost as a ball in high weed simply because the devil got in your mind while you was dreaming, while you was asleep. Amen. Right. So sometimes you have to get up repenting. Come on. So we have learned that repentance and confession is not just for right. someone who has never known the Lord, but it's for our daily lives. All right. If I haven't proven that to you in the last five sermons, I ain't going to be able to prove that to you today. Amen? Come on. Because I've told you over and over and over the scriptures that God gives us. And these nuts that are out in left field that say that don't even be conscious of your sins. If you sin, just go on by it and don't pay no attention to it because you're saved once in grace, always in grace. You'll never have to worry about it. Sin can't harm you. Oh, we've learned different. Right. We have seen example after example of what sin does in the lives of people who allow sin to stay there. Right. Amen? Amen? Now listen, this stuff, you know, we, you, can go one, you can go to one extreme or the other. Yeah. We've got some people who believe you can live loose as a goose and it never hurts you and you're going to go to heaven and just live like the devil. Mm -hmm. And we've got other people who believe you have to be perfect. Well, good luck on both of those. Oh, Amen. Boy. Because you ain't going to be perfect until you get out of this life. Amen. You ain't going to be sinless until you get out of this life. That's what the blood's for. Amen. Yeah. That's what the blood of Jesus is for. Amen. Yeah. That's why it gives us a space to repent. Yeah. We're not talking about sinless perfection. We're talking about leaving unconfessed sin in your life and allowing it to grow like weeds in your garden. And sooner or later, it no, you no longer control it, but it controls you. The Bible says, let not sin reign in your mortal body. Right. It says that the, the one that you yield your members to, you become the servant to that. Amen. Amen. Whether in righteousness unto death or righteousness to eternal life. So whether you obey your flesh or whether you obey the Spirit. Yep. Amen. Sooner or later, sin will take you farther than you want to go, yep. keep you long than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. Amen. Yep. Sooner or later, Come sin, on, you can play around with it a little while. We learned that with Samson. Right. Sister Nancy Samson played around with sin for a little while and he still felt the Spirit. Yeah. Brother Billy got up out of the bed of the harlot. Right. Felt the Spirit. Yeah. Tore the gates off of the city walls and ran up on top of the hill and said, I'm Samson! Right. But one day, yeah. one day, after playing around with sin for so long, he got up out of the lap of another harlot, shook himself, said, I'll go out as I've done before. Right. I'll feel the Spirit like I did before. Mm -hmm. And he didn't even know that the Spirit had departed from him. Right. And where did he end up? He wound up grinding in the prison house of his enemy with his eyes poked out under the bondage of what caused all of this. Where did it start? Mm -hmm. Samson's sin. Mm -hmm. Instead of repenting, instead of confessing, instead of saying, Oh God, forgive me! Mm -hmm. He just continued to play in sin. Yeah. Oh, he could feel the Spirit of God. And we talked about this. People think because they can feel the Spirit, they're okay. Uh -huh. Well, it must be all right. It ain't hurting nothing. It can't be because I can still feel the Spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. God will allow that. His Spirit will woo you for a time. Mm -hmm. And then one day you'll find yourself lost and don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Simply because you allowed sin to move in and you didn't get rid of it. That's right. Amen. Amen. Simply because you allowed sin to reign in your mortal mind. It don't start out like that. Yeah. It starts out as little things. Sin starts out as little most of the time. Amen. And then it begins to grow. And the more you leave it unattended, the more you leave it unconfessed, the, the more you leave it to grow and to do what it wants, it will take its full course. And when it is finished with you, it brings forth death. Yeah. When it is finished means that it's doing the work. Right. Amen. Come on. And we've seen this. Where do we see this? We saw this in Lucifer. We saw this in Adam and Eve. We saw this in King Saul. We saw this in King David. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We saw this in Eli the priest and his sons. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. As I said, we saw it in Samson. We saw it in Achan whenever he took the gold and the Babylonian garment and he hid it in his tent. Yeah. 
Yeah. Example after example we see all in the Word of God. And that's yeah. not even... We can look in our, just in, in the history of America and see where sin leads. Amen? We talked last week about how sin does not just affect the individual with death, but it affects a nation with death as well. It affects the nation the same way as it does the individual. When a nation forsakes God... And sin begins to reign. Does it sound familiar to you this morning? Amen. 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 And sin begins to become the norm, uh -huh. the allowed. Amen. Right. Instead of that which should be shunned and ashamed of, you see, America ain't ashamed of sin no more. That's right, brother. The church ain't ashamed of sin no more. Amen. I was listening to one of our sermons being broadcast over the radio station this week, and it was dealing with yeah. these different churches that have different cliques that they want to try to get you into. You know, they have alternative music for the rap crowd and they have, you know, rock music for the rock crowd. And, yeah. and they had this one thing, one of these churches was called On Tap Night. Yeah. You had to be at least 21 years old to, uh, to attend it because there was going to be some drinking. Mm -hmm. This was a church event. You see, the church winks at sin. The church don't think that sin is important enough. Listen, you don't have to take my word for it. Ask Rick Warren. Ask Joel Osteen. Ask some of the other big name preachers today. Amen? And they'll tell you, sin? I don't go there. Why? Because they don't think it's important enough to preach about anymore. They don't think it's something that has to be talked about or something that has to be taught, something that has to be preached. Amen? Sin's still the problem, amen? Sin is still a problem today. It brought forth death in the life of Adam and Eve way back in the Garden of Eden. It's still bringing forth death today. You say, Brother Billy, we're well, you've been talking about all these examples from years and years ago. Hundreds of years, thousands of years. Well, I challenge you this morning. If you want to see if sin has changed any, if you want to see that its results have changed any, why don't you take a walk down the drunken alleys of Skid Row and see what sin does to you? Amen? Why don't you take a walk down the ICU unit of people who are dying and being eaten alive with AIDS because of their sexual sexual uh, uh, choices they made in life? Amen? The sin they enjoyed for a pleasure that now eats at them day after day. Why don't you drive down the streets of some of our larger cities in the United States and see those young women standing on the street corners strung out on drugs that's selling their body for their next fix. Amen? And see what sin is still doing today. It still does today what it's always done. It kills, it destroys, and it steals. Same thing. Hasn't changed. Right. Sin's still the same as it's always been. The result's still the same as it's always been. The answer for it is still the same as it's always been. Amen. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners who plunge beneath the flood lose all of their guilty stains. The answer has always been Jesus. It's Jesus today in His shed blood. There's only one cure for the disease that mankind has got and it's the blood of the Lamb. There's only one cure for the disease the church has got and it's the blood of the Lamb. There's only one cure for the disease that America has got and it's not the Republican Party or the Democratic Party or the Independent Party or the Tea Party. It's the blood of Jesus and nothing else. Jesus is still the only answer. That's right. Still the only answer. Amen. Sin is still the problem. Yes, sir. And as we said before, it's probably more dangerous now than it's ever been. Come on. Because at least people used to acknowledge it. Yeah. At least people used to acknowledge, oh yeah, sin, it ain't good, it's bad. 